Gettysburg, Longstreet said, had been ground of no value. That day, he added, was the saddest of my life. Almost a third of those engaged, 51,000 men, were lost. The North suffered 23,000 casualties. The South, 28,000. The 2,400 inhabitants of Gettysburg now had 10 times that number of dead and wounded men to care for. Wounded men were brought into our houses and laid side by side in our halls and first story rooms. Carpets were so saturated with blood as to be unfit for further use. Walls were blood stained, as well as books that were used for pillows. Jenny McCreary. The Confederacy could not afford such sacrifices. All hope of invading the North was ended. The next day, Lee began the long retreat back to Virginia as a summer downpour washed the blood from the grass and pelted the wounded who rode in a wagon train that stretched 17 miles. July 4. Was ever the nation's birthday celebrated in such a way before? I wonder what the South thinks of us Yankees now. I think Gettysburg will cure the rebels of any desire to invade the North again. Elijah Hunt Rose. Despite urgings from Washington, Meade refused to attack Lee's retreating army. Another opportunity to destroy the Army of Northern Virginia was lost. Once again, Lincoln was furious. Meanwhile, Robert E. Lee wrote Jefferson Davis, offering to resign. Dear President Davis, I cannot even accomplish what I myself desire. How can I fill the expectations of others? I generally feel a begrowing failure of my bodily strength. I anxiously urge the matter upon Your Excellency from my belief that a younger and abler man than myself can readily be obtained. Robert E. Lee. The offer was not accepted. William Faulkner, an intruder in the dust, says that for every Southern boy, it's always in his reach to imagine it being one o'clock on an early July day in 1863. The guns are laid, the troops are lined up, the flags are already out of their cases and ready to be unfurled, but it hasn't happened yet. And uh, he can go back to the time before the war was going to be lost, and he can always have that moment for himself. Hospital near Gettysburg. My dear father, it has pleased the God of battles that I should number among the many wounded. Through his infinite kindness and mercy, I am permitted to inform you that I have recovered. Two places. First, through the hip. Second, the ball entered the inner corner of my left eye and came out at the lower tip of my right ear. Both are doing fine and healed up. Write to me. I may get the letter. Your devoted son, Albert Batchelor. After Gettysburg, the residents of Deer Isle, Maine, began scanning the casualty list for familiar names. Two privates, John Gray and Isaiah Eaton, were badly wounded and soon died in hospitals. Both were buried in the new National Cemetery at Gettysburg. The streets grew quiet when news of Gettysburg reached Clarksville, Tennessee. 
14th Tennessee Regiment had left town two years before with 960 men. When the Battle of Gettysburg began, only 365 remained. By the end of the first day, there were 60 men left. By the end of the battle, there were only three. A gloom rests over the city. The hopes and affections of the people were wrapped in the regiment. What a terrible responsibility rests upon those who inaugurated this unholy war. On July 26th, 1863, Sam Houston, first president of the Republic of Texas, unshakable supporter of the American Union, died at Huntsville, Texas. I ask of him who buildeth up and pulleth down nations to unite us. I wish, if this union must be dissolved, that its ruins be the monument of my grave. I carved him out a headboard, as skillful as I could. And if you wish to find it, I can tell you where it stood. I send you back his hymn book, the cap he used to wear, the lock I cut the night before of his bright curly hair. I sent you back his Bible the night before he died. I turned its leaves together and read it by his side. I keep the belt he was wearing. He told me so to do. It had a hole upon the side just where the ball went through. So now I've done his bidding. There's nothing more to tell, but I shall always mourn with you the boy we love so well.